whatever. I mean, I can be whatever I want to be. I can be ignorant and act like a fool, or I can be a doctor and be real cool. I mean, I can be whatever I want to be. I can be a, I can be a drunk driver and wind up in jail, or I can be a post and deliver the mail. I mean, I can be whatever I want to be. I can, I can be homeless in the middle of the street, or I can be rich and have plenty to eat. I mean, I can be whatever I want to be. I can be a farmer, or I can be a thief, or I can be a... a <laughs> I can be a bed or I can be a thief or I can be a farmer so I can play a beat and I can be whatever I want to be. My name is Sonia Smith and the, the title of my poem is A Traveler. Fly ways go by dawn and low lights on. Sun rays and seas and stars and stone. Manless and friends locate my home. This is my torture, my love, my song. A wonderful black girl knows that she be desired by others only she desires herself. That beauty is not a shade but a mindset, and the best intent of it is self confidence and a top some sense and set her confidence. A wonderful black girl knows that her love are plump and beautiful, and she does not need to hold them in to make them thin, and she does not need to rely on college enough to make her lips and attain her life. A wonderful black girl knows that there is no such thing as a perfect note. Because they know that that next to her is meant to help you breathe. And if you can believe a black girl, you succeed. Mm -hmm. A wonderful black girl knew not to be bitter that her father, like her sons, were raised by a similar hand. And what you see in your father, you don't miss what you see in your man. But the morning of your father came from right hand. So, what if, so if the sculpting, so if the sculptor is bitter, then how sweet can be your man? If bitter the black girl, then how sweet can be their claim? A wonderful black girl knew her rubies are hidden in the sand. What will that go on you? Life is what you make of it, and opportunities, opportunities are what you take from it. And there will be no black female president if no black girl wants to become it. My name is Jabari Young, and, my po and the title of my poem is Button Your Lips. You have to know to button your lips and things you may want to say, because you have to be very careful about the toes you step on today. Those are the same clothes you step on yesterday. You may not know where they may lead. Those are the same clothes to be connected to someone you may need. My name is Demetria Allen, and the title of my poem is What If I Am a Black Woman? What if I am a black woman? Is it a disease? Well, if it is, I shall just catch it because they need to pour into a bottle. Label it and sprinkle it all over the people, men and women, whoever love or cry, work or die for any one of us. So what if I am a black woman? Is it a crime? Arrest me because I am strong, but I am gentle, I am smart, but I am learning, I am loving, but I am hateful and I like to work because I like to eat and feed and clothe and house me. Mine's and yours and everybody's, like I've been doing for the past 300 years. What if I am a black woman? Is it a sin? Pray for me and pray for you too. If you are like women of color, because we are midnight black, chestnut brown, honey brown, chocolate covered, cocoa good, big lip, and big hip, and beautiful, all the I'm a black woman. Does it bother me that much? Because I want a man who wants me, loves me, trusts me, and respects me, and gives me everything. Because I give him everything back. Plus, what if I am a black woman? Is it you saying commit me? Because I want the happiness, not tears. Truth, not lies. Pleasure, not pain. Sunshine, not rain. And man, not a child. What if I am a black woman? I love me, and I want you to love. I love me and I want you to love me too. I am as I always been. Near you, close to you, besides you, strong, giving, loving. For over 300 years, your black woman loved me. My name is Courtney Birch. My pastor is Reverend Ronald Ron, St. Paul Amy Church, St. Augustine, Florida. And the title of my poem is To Tell the Truth. To tell the truth, I never think of you unless I'm down and out and I don't know what to do. I'm so ashamed of myself because sometimes I forget to pray unless things are just right. 
going so good, but they're just not going my way. I find myself calling your name whenever I find I need help. Oh, God, I say, and then I catch myself. I wonder how many people are guilty of this, too. Now, before you point your finger, I wonder, is it you? <laughs> Share my life and see what I see. Smell the stench outside my door. The sewage and garbage smell my ghetto. Sleep in my bed, feel my pain as another dream goes down the drain. Hear through my ears, look through my eyes, feel my solace beyond the skies. Share with me the knowledge that's inside. I'm free. Come into my skin. Come into my skin and sing with me. The title is You Ain't Got Nothing On Me. When I went to church last Sunday, I sure learned a thing or two that blacks too can be successful. You just have to really want to. Now, honey, I may be black. But you ain't got nothing on me. With a good education, I can be whatever I want to be. You see, things ain't like they used to be, and that I want you to understand that my people can do just as good or better than any other man. And since I'm from Missouri, which is called the Show Me State, honey, you show me any great man, and I'll show you a black man just as great. You show me Larry Bird, and I'll show you a Michael Jordan. <laughs> you show me Dan Marino, and I'll show you a Michael Vick. <laughs> you show me Britney Spears, <laughs> and I'll show you a Beyonce Knowles. <laughs> You show me Clay Aiken, and I'll show you a Ruben Stutter. You show me Jose Martini, and I'll show you Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. You show me Sally Jesse Raphael, and I'll show you an Oprah Winfrey. Now, honey, I may be black, but you ain't got nothing on me. With a good education, I can be whatever I want to be. My name is Javar Collier, and I attend St. Paul Andy Church, South Sea, Florida. But my past name is Reverend Ross, and I'm here Wake up. Wake up, young people, wake up. And hear what I have to say. You must get a good education in order to succeed today. Wake up, young people, wake up. If you're striving to be bright, you must realize the importance of knowing how to write. Wake up, young people, wake up. If you really want to succeed, there's no limit or harm in about it. You must know how to read. Wake up, young people, wake up. Remember, it's okay to go out and play, but remember, first things first, you must study first each day. So wake up, young people, wake up. And don't forget a word I say, because if you want to be a winner, education is a must today. So wake up, young people, wake up. And the title of my poem is Poor Girl. You've got another love, and I know it, someone who adores you just like me. Hanging on your words like they were gold, thinking that she understands your soul. Poor girl, just like me. You're breaking another heart, and I know it, and there's nothing I can do. If I try to tell her what I know, she'll misunderstand and make me go. Poor girl, just like me. You're going to leave her too, and I know it. She'll never know what made you go. She'll cry and wonder what went wrong. Poor girl, just like me.
if you want to sit in there, that I'm not sure you can just need some acres over here. I admit that I'm not as young as I want to be, but I'm not being old. This is what I can hardly see. Now, sometimes I can't move, just have a lot to say, but I'm not being old. It just seems that way. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Rashida Haslam, and the title of my poem is To the Young That Wants to Die. Sit down. Inhale. Exhale. The gun will wait. The weight will wait. The girl in the small seductive vow will wait, will wait. Will wait a week, will wait through April. You do not have to die this day. Death will postpone. Death will abide your postponement. I assure you, death is down the street. Death can even meet you next week. You do not have to die this a certain day. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it. But it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give count if I abuse it. Just a teeny little minute, but turn me, isn't it? They take my kindness for weakness. They take my silence for speechless. They consider my uniqueness strange. They call my language slang. They see my confidence as conceit. They see my mistakes as defeat. My success is somehow, oh, my success is accidental. They see my intelligence to potential. Cry for my rape makes me too black. Some say I'm a strong woman. Some tell me I'm a brave woman. Some think I should be more of a woman. Some tell you, will tell you I'm a good woman. While others think I should be more of a woman or at all like any woman they ever knew. And that I could be so much more. But all I am is a woman. All I am is my woman. I am the woman I can be, the one I want to be. Not the one I should be, could be, or would be.
morning, church. So, uh, you know, like Pastor Rawls already said, I'm not a preacher at all. Uh, yesterday, I think it was uh, Reverend Williams who asked me if I was going to be preaching a sermon, and I, I told him not, but I'm going to say some stuff at the podium. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully that'll do. So, uh, if you open up your Bibles, we're going to turn to uh, Luke chapter 22. Verses 47 through 52. And forgive me, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading for my phone. I haven't committed the sermon to memory. I don't know how people do that. But uh, it'll still be good, hopefully. So uh, it says, While he was still speaking, a crowd came up. And the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Uh, when darkness reigned, I just realized I, I forgot to add the last little bit of it, but I got it right here in my phone. Uh, every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. That's where I got the title from, when darkness reigns. So um, I think uh, uh, I, I can't really preach, but I, I can teach. I do that sometimes. I teach music and uh, you know whatever else people want to learn from me. So uh, when teaching, it's really important to make sure people understand uh, not just the general idea, but all the words that you're actually using. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a lecture uh, in class and a professor has said something, you know, a fool will have because I don't know what he's talking about, and he just keeps going as if he doesn't have to clarify. So, so the first thing I want to clarify is, uh, is darkness. I want to define it for you. Darkness is the partial or total absence of light. Uh, the secondary definition is wickedness or evil. Um, so, so darkness is the absence of light, and I thought, what is light? And uh, well, if we look at scripture, in Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Uh, Matthew 4 and 16 says, The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, the light has dawned. Matthew 5, chapter, I mean, verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Uh, John 1 and 5 says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness is not overcome it. Um, and I think my, my favorite is John uh, 8 and 12, which says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So uh, I, I got this example from uh, from this man named uh, Ravi uh, Zacharias. He spoke at UF earlier this week, or I guess last week. And uh, he, he talked about how, uh, in a metaphor, you could, you could compare you know, the Son of Man to the actual physical Son. And uh, if, you, if, if, you, if you follow the Son, if you notice, uh, the Son really commands your focus. It's too bright for you to not notice it. Um, even if it's only in your periphery, which is the, the corners of your vision, uh, and you're not directed towards it, its place in the sky is still obvious to you. So uh, it can still guide you. However, if you turn completely away from the sun, your shadow, which is your own darkness, becomes your focus. Um, even though light is uh, still all around, and, and you know light is around because you can see, uh, uh, the, 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 your own shadow becomes your focus. Um, darkness steals your attention because the light isn't in your view. So your shadow becomes your guide, and it always points as far away from the light um, as possible. That's something you'll notice if you go stand outside. I wish I had an illustration, a visual of some kind, but I didn't think that far ahead. So uh, hopefully our imaginations are good uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, so keep that in the back of your mind. I wanted to talk about the world as it exists today, because everybody knows that the world is always changing. But even though we know that, sometimes we don't pay too close attention to how it's changing uh, in particular. So um, a major change in today's culture has to do with how we view life. 
Um, I, I want to speak on young people specifically, since uh, young people increasingly drive the social and political and uh, eventually religious conversations that we have in the country that moves us forward. Let me adjust this a little bit. I know y'all can hear me, but can you hear me too well? I feel like my voice is a little, a little booming. We good? All right, all right, good, good. Um, let me see. Eventually. Okay, here we go. So I think that um, as, as a generation, and I hope nobody around my age group takes offense, but I think uh, I think as a generation we might be a little a little uh, uh, lost. And uh, what I mean by that is that um, I mean that nihilism I think is a plague amongst young people. And if you don't know what nihilism is, it's the rejection of all religious and moral principles, uh, often the belief that life is meaningless. Uh, it maintains that nothing in the world has real existence and uh, existential crises are in the backgrounds of many young people's minds. So they ask the questions, uh, what am I here for? Uh, am I who I'm destined to be? Am I a soul born into the wrong body? Should I continue to live? These are, these are things that I know, uh, probably I'd say about half of my friends I know for sure think about uh, on a regular basis. And I don't know if it's always been that way, or people are just more open about it now. But, uh, but I think it's important to, to address it, uh, as long as we know it's, a, it's an issue. So, um, uh, you'll find that if you imagine yourself as someone who rejects the light, you end up looking within, and what you'll likely find is darkness. So you'll end up like Judas, and uh, eventually you'll find yourself looking back and asking, what have I done? But uh, you didn't understand it at the time, because you were turned away. You know, everybody's got a right to turn away. That's the beauty of free will. But uh, with free will uh, comes sin. As much good as you can do, uh, you can do bad. We have equal capacities for both as flawed people. So um, 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 I'll finish the example I gave before about the sun. Uh, when you turn away from the sun, uh, at first, in the morning, the sun will follow you. And, uh, and if, if you stay there, you'll find that eventually it'll, it'll find itself back in your, uh, in, in your view in your purview. But if you turn away again, now it's gone again. There are only so many times that you can turn away from the sun before night falls and, uh, and you've lost the opportunity to do it again. Um, I'm glad I got one. <laughs> I got one. So, uh, so, so, so at night the sun is much harder to find. Uh, but be warned, believers also have some stuff to, to worry about uh, in this little sermonette that I put together. Um, the followers of Christ's teachings, you have a great responsibility, uh, not just to yourself and to Christ, but also to those people who turn their backs on the sun. So in a time when people have the means to be the most connected, they starve for love and caring and personal contact. And it might be your mission to lend an ear instead of a commandment. Uh, uh, this generation doesn't like commandments. And I, I don't mean that they don't that they don't uh, like doing right by people or even doing right by God, but um, I'm also mean that they don't want you to try to be God for them. So, uh, so I think a lot of times it's easy, especially if you know the word, and especially if you know God, and uh, if you know yourself, to try to force it onto other people, but you gotta, you gotta let them find it. So uh, and in the Garden of Gethsemane, even Jesus prayed to God, uh, and he was God incarnate, uh, embodied in flesh. He didn't command the officers of the temple guard to straighten up and fly right and leave him alone, even though it was within his power, it would have been easy for him to do so, even though it would have made him comfortable. Uh, sometimes you have to be willing to be uncomfortable for the sake of a, <coughs> for the sake of not only your brothers and sisters in Christ, but um, also those in the world. So instead Jesus submitted himself to the will of God, which is a uh, what, I, what I'm hoping I've, I've done today, uh, when my dad first asked me to do this, I told him no, because I didn't think God was, was, uh, was telling me that. But, you know, eventually I figured he's my fat father, but he's also my, my, uh, my, my spiritual father, he's my pastor. So uh, I thought maybe God told him that I needed to do something, and God, uh, you know, didn't fill me in. So, uh, so, so I'm almost done here. Um, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close. Uh, the world needs God and God's people. 
So I entreat you, all you who believe, it is your time. It is your time to be Christ-like, but not to be Christ. It is your time to lead by example. It is your time to be the light that God called you to be, and to see the light that God's calling you to see. It is your time when darkness reigns. Thank you.